They want me to stream classic at BlizzCon. Uh, me, Guzu, Sarth, and Fandy. Also, during my streaming slot, there's going to be uh, a bunch of people from the classic team playing with us during our streaming slot. So I don't know what that means, but I do know that WoW is back, baby. WoW is back. WoW is back, baby. I I'm like 99% sure there's gonna be a new fresh, right? Because they've mentioned that there's gonna be a new fresh at some point. I don't know anything other than that. All I gotta say is this. Yesterday, we put on the biggest tournament, the biggest event in the history of WoW, 300,000 viewers. And it was classic. I think, I think we opened some eyes yesterday. And I, and I think if Blizzard is smart, then I do think they will capitalize on it. I mean, I'm sure they already know. I really, really hope that they, they continue to push. Because here's the thing, you know that, that 300,000 viewers, it came, you know what it came from? You took vanilla WoW and you changed it a little bit. If you die, your character is deleted. If you type slash mock garage, you know what they did? They went to the code, hacker mans, they went to the code and they changed the code that said, when you, when you die in a duel, instead of a one, they change your health to zero. The minimum health is a zero instead of one, right? Just like that little change, that whole tournament was based off of that one little change, you know, right? That one little change allowed that massive, massive, massive event. Let's talk about predictions for WoW classic for wow for blizzcon the big news everybody keeps talking about it even even i can't i feel like i'm somebody who's very like grounded in my expectations and even i can't stop thinking about classic plus because i keep telling myself for them to do a classic plus they've said in the past that they don't want to run two mmos they basically don't want to run classic as like its own separate thing but the problem is Classic has been so overwhelmingly successful. OTK, we put on the biggest tournament, the biggest event, as far as I know, uh, in, in WoW history, right? As far as like a planned tournament type of thing goes. I think if Blizzard is smart, like we gotta, we gotta go and be like, yo, hey, look at this. WoW section, 300K viewers, Blizzard. Capitalize yo. on this. People want to play, dude. People, you know what somebody sent me? Look at this. I'm gonna show you guys this comment. Somebody sent me this. This right here, this is probably the, the best, biggest compliment that you could possibly get. Somebody posted this. This was my first time watching a stream on Twitch. It was hella entertaining. Made me download the WoW client to try hardcore and I haven't played in over a yeah, decade. That's not my over a decade. And I've never watched a stream on Twitch and it made me play the game. A decade, does anybody know how long that is? No, like seriously, how long is that? I have no idea. I'm just kidding. Okay, um, it's also crazy that he's lying so much. Cause come on, I mean, like, there's no way that's true, right? There's no way that's true. Joking aside, if you're that person, check your PayPal. And two, this is like a massive opportunity for Blizzard, man. Like, like, you you saw when you have something as big as this. That's vanilla. The number one thing I think we're gonna get at BlizzCon: new classic fresh announced. Either. Season of Mastery 2 or, or Classic Plus. That's, I, I think it's like, I think it's all but guaranteed at this point. It's the only, like you, ha you saw the streamer schedule. So on Friday, November 3rd, from 1 p.m. PDT, 3 p.m. PDT, so, so 3 to 5 Tex Texas time, 3 to 5. This is the only group, the only streaming slot that, that we have with people from the dev team. It's a huge flag to me. Uh, number two, the classic panel, day one schedule, the doors open, opening ceremony is at 10 a.m. or 11 a.m., doors open at 10, opening ceremony at 11, and then um, WoW What's Next at 1.30, WoW Classic What's Next at 3.30. So this is it. We are gonna see this panel after this streaming slot. So this is how my stream is gonna go. I'm gonna go do opening ceremony, and then I guess I'm gonna miss the wow what's next because I'm gonna be streaming, and then I'm gonna go stream whatever it is that we're gonna stream with, with people from the dev team, and then we're gonna come back, and then we'll, we'll watch this wow classic what's next panel. I think the fact that there's such a massive slot, is that there's a huge time slot for wow classic what's next, the fact that we have people on the dev team with, with me and Sarth and Guzu, 
because uh, we're primarily classic guys. I really feel like there's going to be something that we get with classic special, right? I think it's kind of like a no-brainer. Now, they did announce in the past that there will be a new fresh, and they said that it's not necessarily going to be a Season of Mastery 2. They're not going to call it Season of Mastery. They're not going to say what it is. <laughs> They're probably going to ask what you want and then announce it. No. But I think we're going to get the first look. New retail expansion. I'm not a huge retail guy, but that'll be interesting. I mean, this is basically like the WoW BlizzCon. Like, it's going to be all WoW stuff. What are they doing with current classic... Wrath. That's what I want to hear. I think they actually are going to give us Cataclysm. Overwatch 3? Yeah, guys, we're going to get Overwatch 3 as well. Yeah, and Diablo Diablo 5. I think they are going to give us Cataclysm. And I think, I, I think that there's... I'll tell you straight up. I'm... Cataclysm is whenever I hard quit WoW. I quit in Wrath, and then I came back at the end and then quit again. I was like, eh, I'll play it again someday. Cataclysm, whenever I quit, I was like, no, I'm out. This, this is not This is not WoW. Like, why am I choosing my spec? I, I don't like the class design. I know a lot of other people really liked it. That, that was just like the point for me that it was like, I'm not playing a paladin anymore. I don't feel like I'm playing a paladin. But there are a lot of people, dude. Why can rogues heal? Oh, my gosh, dude. Rogue recuperate was the most broken thing, dude. Ugh. Anyway. There's a lot of people that will really like Cataclysm, and for all the things that I don't like about Cataclysm, the leveling in Cataclysm was really fun. And a lot of people really liked the raid design in Cataclysm. Like, from that front, those are things that I didn't do. But other people really, really, really loved Cataclysm at the beginning, with the raiding and everything. Kata isn't really classic anymore. I would agree, but I would not be surprised to see, because here's the thing. Let's say they do a season of Mastery 2, quote, Classic Plus, whatever. What happens to Classic Wrath? Are they going to leave it in Wrath forever? Because that doesn't, I mean, that doesn't make sense. If you were going to leave it at one expansion forever, you probably would have left it at Burning Crusade, right? It only makes sense for them to <laughs> shut it down. I don't know. Like, because think about it, for years, there was, like, for years, there was me, there was you, there was all these other people that wanted Vanilla WoW so bad, and we didn't have it. And you guys remember that all these other people would shit on us, and they were saying, Vanilla is stupid. Nobody wants to play Vanilla. Why would you want to go back? I, we've already done that. Even though I might not like Cataclysm, And even though you might not like Cataclysm, we are, what, four, five more years removed from whenever Classic Vanilla was announced. Actually, almost six years. It was 2017. So it's been that many more years since Cataclysm. In fact, I think it's been longer. It has been longer now the, dis the, the distance in time or the difference in time from now to whenever Cataclysm came out is now longer than the difference in time to whenever Classic WoW, Vanilla WoW was announced, like, like WoW Classic was announced, to OG Vanilla. By one year, am I right? It's either one year or it was the same. No? Is it not? When did Cata come out? Was it 20, was it 2009 or 2010? 2010. So think about it. It's been six years since WoW Classic was announced. WoW Classic was announced in 2017. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, WoW Classic was announced, yeah. So six years. It was announced 2018, wasn't it? No, no, it was announced 2017. So, so it's the same amount of time. That's six years. And then Cataclysm came out six years later than original. Except it released in 2019. Yeah, I'm talking about the announcement, right? I'm talking about the announcement and how excited we were and whenever they finally said, hey, we're going to do this. 
My point is, I'm, I'm losing some of you guys because numbers and counting is too hard for some people. I'm sorry. But there, there's, there's people out there that did like Cataclysm, and I do think there's people out there that will keep playing into Cataclysm, right? There are people that are going to keep playing into Cataclysm, and I feel like it's, it's, it's very easy for them to go from Wrath to Cataclysm because they said whenever they were building Vanilla, they were trying to go back like chronologically to where they could easily go on to the next expansion. Now, I do think there isn't a following with Cata like there was with Vanilla, but what I'm saying is I think they're still going to provide this. I think, do you, do you guys think they're not going to provide this? I, I actually do think they are going to provide this because I think this is easy for them. I think this is like something they can just snap their fingers essentially compared to, compared to doing anything else and being like, yeah, okay, we're moving on to Cataclysm. Because it's, it's the, the cost benefit is too good. I, I think that they are, it's going to be very easy for them to move on to Cataclysm uh, compared to doing anything like a classic plus so that I mean it just keeps subs going But who wants that I don't and you don't but but tons of people out there do there are people out there that like cataclysm So I I, I wouldn't I, I expect them to say because what are they gonna do with wrath? Wrath Plus. Now, I'm going to be honest. If Classic Plus, if they don't do this, and classes, Classic Plus is based off of Wrath of the Lich King, I'm going to be sorely disappointed. I, will, I personally will be very disappointed. And I don't think they will do it. I, I, I do think they'll lose the community on that one. I, I think a lot of people will, will not feel good about that. Logistically, logistically, it kind of makes sense. But as far as like from a design perspective and what people want, I think it does not make sense. I think people will not want that. I think what needs to happen, I mean, I, I've said this before, and I think, uh, who, who was it Asmin? I think Asmin also was saying the same thing. I would love if they did a TBC plus, if they, if they expanded on the game after Burning Crusade. That's what I would love. But I, don't, I think I'm in the minority. I don't, I, don't, I don't know if a lot of people would like that. I know I would like that, and I know Asmin would like that. But I, I think people really want to have, uh, I, I think people really want to have a vanilla classic plus, and I want to see. I think they want to see expanded content off of that. Now, I've talked about this before. I've talked about what I want to see specifically. I want to, something I want to see specifically with classic plus. What do I want in classic plus? Actually, no. Let's start here. What is classic plus? Because I keep seeing people ask that. What is classic plus? So the idea behind classic plus, because people keep asking. And I know a lot of people, oh, we already know, we already know. Shut the hell up, jackass. Stop, there's tons of people that don't know, okay? So stop trying to speak for everybody else and making everybody else feel stupid, okay? Quit being a jackass. There's a ton of people that have no, because I keep seeing it in chat. Okay, so the idea behind Classic Plus is it's just like Vanilla WoW, but just like pumped full of microtransactions, okay? And everybody's buying gold and buying gear. It's going to be great. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, the idea... <laughs> <laughs> the idea, <laughs> just kidding. The, the idea behind Classic Plus is essentially taking Vanilla WoW, taking what Vanilla WoW is, and expanding on it uh, in, in a way that gets to use the entirety of the world and, and really clean up the current content of the game. So if you look at this map, if you look at the world map, there's zones here that are like not really utilized all the way. They're, they're not really utilized well. Uh, they're, I mean, they're not, not even accessible, right? The big one is Hygel. Hygel is the one that everybody always talks about, right? <sighs> Hello, mouse? I just heard a... Dude, why is my mouse scratchy? Why is my mouse scratchy? 
You guys ever get that? If you have a hard mouse pad and like you, you feel like scratching on your mouse? Okay, that was weird. Anyway, so, sorry, back, wipe. Okay, don't wipe, never wipe. Okay, uh, you have Hygel, right? Hygel for one. Everybody always talks about Hygel. You know, this is this is a zone that you can actually sneak into. People have seen videos of people sneaking into Hygel. All this whole, this whole map is like in the game, but you can't even click on it, right? But you can find a way to sneak into it. There's even a place when you go to, uh, when, when you go here to uh, Everlook, or sorry, when you go to Winter Spring, uh, and you come down from Everlook and you go through this demon area, there's a tunnel that leads into Hygel and it has a construction sign in front of it. So if you make it all the way through all those level 60 elites and you see it, there's a construction sign, right? Kind of funny. And uh, geez, I'll get to that. Geez, I'll get to that in a second. Bill's saying put Hygel in the game. Find a way to utilize Hygel as content. You have like the Twilight Highlands, right? Outside of Grim Batol. I mean, this is kind of a bad character to show this on because you guys can't see any of the map. Let me, let me log on my, my other paladin, or my, my level six, my OG Fairlina. This is my classic character. I copied him over as like a little like trophy. Look, some people are already getting to my point, right? But relax, let me finish, let me finish. Let me cook, let me cook, okay. So another one is like Grim Batol, right? You have Grim Batol here, which is like the, the, this is like the home of the wild hammer dwarves that got pushed out of the wetlands or out of Grim Batol up north into the hinterlands in Airy Peak, right? And they have a, you have a little wild hammer dwarf area. So this is where some of them are. And then uh, I was doing a little bit of lore check before, but some of them went this way and they went into the Twilight Highlands. So there's this strip of land here that you can't even click on either. Well, there's a whole strip of land to the, um, to the east of the wetlands and Loch Madon over the mountains that is, I mean, it's, it's inaccessible, right? Like, in the normal gameplay, it's inaccessible. There's nothing really there. That's another place, right? That's another place that you've got. You've got, uh, when you go down into, when you go back to Kalimdor, let's flip-flop back and forth, you have Oldham, right? Oldham, whenever you go and uh, go to the, uh, when you go over here, whoops, where do you go? Here. Uh, when, you, when you're over here and you go to do all the quests around Oldaman, right? When you go to do all the quests around Oldaman, right here in the Badlands, just south of Loch Madon, there's a whole quest chain that leads you to Oldham. And it talks about like the history of the dwarves and the earthen and where they all came from. This is a whole area that is like, they've planned for this. This was in the game originally, right? In the game originally. Caverns of Time is put in in Burning Crusade. Karazhan is put in in, in Wrath, right? Karazhan, er, excuse me, in Karazhan as well. Frick, in, in Burning Crusade as well. Words, brain. Uh, so when you go here, let's go to Duskwood, and then you keep going from Duskwood into Deadwind Pass. You go to Karazhan. Karazhan is the level, uh, level 70, the first raid at level 70, right? And then behind Karazhan, there's a whole Karazhan Crips area. Right, that, that again is inaccessible through normal means. So what I'm saying here is there's all this area in the game. You know, you go to Silver Pine Forest, and then right here is the Gray Main Wall, and behind the Gray Main Wall is Silver Pine or excuse me, is uh Gilneas, which is the home of the Worgen. So there's one common theme here, right? There's all this stuff, right? There's all this stuff. I mean, you can even go here into the uh uh, into the night or into the blood off starting area, all this stuff. Now there's all these places, all these things that I've mentioned, right? There's a common theme here. So whenever they revamped the world in Kata, they went and they added, <laughs> they went and they added a whole bunch of this stuff, right? So really a lot of what people ask for in Classic Plus are things that they added in Cataclysm, but they don't want to play Cataclysm. They want to go play it. They want to go play it. They want to go play vanilla with vanilla class design, vanilla mechanics, all that stuff. But they want to go play uh, those new zones and stuff that were added in later expansions. Not all of them. All of those things were not added in later expansions. Some of them were added in, in Burning Crusade. Some of them were added in Cataclysm. But that's what people want. So it's kind of funny, right? You even have the uh, you even have the islands down here, and and you have the Maelstrom, right? Which, um, like, they're, they're, the point being is there's all this area. Right? There's all this area on the map 
that is uh, that is inaccessible, that is in the game from 2004, right? Maybe not directly in 2004, but from the OG version of the game, 2004 to 2006, that got added in like 2010, 2009, uh, you know, 2007, like years later. Is the list of all the unfinished content and classic? Yeah, literally. So this map marks with red zones everywhere. Well, I think this is kind of inaccurate, right? Because isn't this just supposed to be AQ40? I think I think this is supposed to be AQ, mostly. But you can expand on a lot of this stuff, right? Hello? There we go. Yeah, it, it, the map looks weird, but that's really supposed to be AQ, right? AQ and then Oldham here, maybe. Yeah. Anyway, right? Point being is there is room for a lot, like a, a lot of room physically for a lot of areas to, to be expanded upon in Vanilla WoW. Now, here's what I want to see. You're making me so hard, S-Fand. That's the plan. I, I may, uh... So anyway, what I'm trying to, what I'm trying to say <laughs> is there's room for a lot of development in Vanilla WoW, and I think what people really want is they want to go play all those zones with vanilla mechanics, with vanilla class design, and maybe, just maybe, a few small changes here and there. Right? Maybe, maybe they, I, I personally want them, like, I'm, I'm, I'm like vanilla brain, nitty gritty, like, that's, that's how I think. Like, I want them to fix some of the talents, like, Reckoning is kind of broken. I want them to fix, like, some Paladin stuff. I want them to do some things under the hood that might help hybrids a little bit to help kind of to help kind of bring some of the other classes that uh, I, I think the class balance in vanilla is a lot people than people a lot better than people think it is, but in PVE it's pretty like egregiously bad. Yeah, PVP is or, sorry PVE. Did I say PVP the first? In PVE it's pretty egregiously bad, but in PVP it's a lot better than people think it is, and it's also a lot better than people think it is. Uh, when it comes to the scope of like what all a class can do, because this game is not designed around what different specs do, it's designed about uh, around what different classes do. However, the way that the player community has kind of gotten over the years, you 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 min max and you really specialize on like this person is good as this, this person is good at that, right? It's this, it's the idea around how paladins essentially in OG vanilla became kind of relegated to being healers, right? There wasn't enough healers. Paladins had strong healing ability. They didn't really have a lot of healing gear at first, but by the end of vanilla, all their tier sets or their their main tier set was like all focused on healing. So, I speak from the perspective of a paladin a lot because it's easy to make those analogies really quickly, right? But you can talk about something like a druid in the same sense. Feral druids in OG vanilla, people thought they were not good tanks. Actually, phenomenal. Feral Druids are phenomenal tanks in vanilla, but they don't have gear that's good for them. Prop Paladins are actually pretty decent tanks. They're not amazing, but they're decent tanks, and they don't really have a lot of gear that's good for them. Now, what if you gave Paladins a taunt? What if, what if, what if there was a, a new set of gear that was in the game? What if there was a tier 3.5 that wasn't really that much stronger than the Knack set, but it was like a Paladin Prop Paladin set? What if it was a feral druid set, leather with defense gear? What if, what if you did these things and you some of the added content that you brought in wasn't really uh, the item level, the actual power of the gear wasn't a lot higher, but it gave you more build variety and it allowed you to do things, uh, do different things with your class that isn't necessarily like what's considered the meta spec all the time, you know? That's that's what I would like to see. That's what I would like to see. I don't want them to add new content, add content onto the top of WoW, and then increase the power creep even more that's just spiking in power and it's just, it's gonna spin out of control and it's gonna be stupid. I want to see them in a classic plus go and add more like horizontal content instead of vertical content as far as uh, power creep goes, right? Not only that, I think that one of the big things Keep going with this. Hopefully someone hears this. Yeah, thanks, dude. I'm glad you guys are liking this. I've talked about this a little bit in the last few days. Vanilla WoW is about the entirety of the game. It's about the game from level 1 to level 60, and that is something that is exclusive to level WoW, or pff, that is exclusive to vanilla WoW, that is 
not really the case in Burning Crusade, as much as I love Burning Crusade. It's not really the case in Burning Crusade. It's not the case in Wrath. It's not the case in any other expansion. Where when you start playing WoW, you start playing WoW at level one. Whereas in Burning Crusade, it feels like I'm really playing the game at level 70. In Wrath, I feel like I'm really playing the game at level 80. One of the things, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a step back a little bit, and I'm going to talk about hardcore. What I love, what I adore about hardcore classic WoW is that hardcore takes what classic WoW is, and it makes so many things about what classic WoW is, and it makes them better, right? Gear is more scarce. When you see somebody with, like, a, a really cool piece of gear, you see somebody at high level, it's, it's just way more epic, right? You're like, damn, that guy is a badass, and we used to have that kind of it back in the day, but we don't really have that anymore because people have gotten so good at the game over time and, and so on. Hardcore has changed that. So like when you get a piece of gear, what is the best feeling in the world? When you're running a dungeon, what is the best feeling in the world as far as like getting new loot goes? It's getting a new weapon, right? Now you can only run the dungeons once per day. And if you can only run the dungeons once per day at low levels, you can't just keep spam running dungeons to be able to, to get really good gear in dungeons and like, oh, I cool, I got the bloom. I got, sm I got Smite's Mighty Hammer, right? I got Emberstone Staff. When you're running dead mines, that might be the only time that you ever run dead mines while you're leveling. Because you can only run it once per day. So you might out level it and not want to go back. So when you go into dead mines and you see that blue Smite's Mighty Hammer drop, you're playing a warrior, you're playing a paladin, you're playing a shaman, and that Smite's Mighty Hammer drops, you were like, hell yeah. It is the best feeling in the world. That is it. That is your weapon. That is your guy. And, and you, you can't spam run it and get it again. You know, it's like, oh, like we didn't get it. Run it back. Run it back. Right? It makes it so much more special when you get that weapon. And it makes it so much more painful when a hunter rolls need thinking that he can use it because he can use two-handers, but it's a mace. And even if he could use a mace, it's not even good for him. So like, stuff like that, it, it makes, that's what makes hardcore WoW, like it, it makes the things about WoW even better. Now, again, on the flip side, I'm a PvPer. Right, I'm, I'm into I, I'm into battle rounds. I'm into arenas. That's I've always been a PvP guy. So for me, some of the things that I really enjoy about level sixty gameplay specifically in in vanilla WoW isn't really there. Right, so hardcore makes some of those things worse. But but the whole top to, did I just discover something on my what on my Grand Marshal Scarab Lord. All con everything done in the game possible. I just discovered an area done Al Gaz. What the hell? Anyway, wait, is this it? Did we just discover Classic Plus? <laughs> what, if, what if Classic Plus was in the game the whole time? Okay, so anyway, so <laughs> done everything, never did leveling quests. Hey, dude, give me those dungeons, dude. So. Yeah, yeah. Bro is vibrating. Hey, listen. I, I didn't hey, I didn't get this scarab lord mount for myself, dude. Let me tell you. This is uh this isn't for me. Anyway, so as I was <laughs> as I was saying <laughs> Um What I would like to see, the reason why I'm talking about the game being from top to bottom, from start to finish, is I think it would be uh, I think it would be good for the game if they wanted to do Classic Plus. I think it would be wise for them to add content throughout the course of the game. Add a new leveling zone. Add a new dungeon, right? Like a, a, a mid-level dungeon. Add a new add a new level zone for like level forty, for example. You know these these areas that are kind of like pain points for like I don't know where to go to level. Like I want a new forty to fifty zone. I, for me, I always have so much trouble from 40 to 50, right? I would love to see a new leveling zone at level 40 to 50. It'd be incredible, you know? Holy shit, I never thought about this. I, I want to see Blizzard in a Classic Plus scenario add content in the mid-levels. And especially in a situation like Hardcore, you see that content over and over again. Why? Because you're dying and <laughs> you've got to go do it again. You know, people are leveling through constantly. That is cool. It keeps the world alive. 
You know, that's a hard, sorry, hardcore keeps the world alive. One of the many good things about classic WoW. I think I think that that would be something very, very wise for them to do. Now, we can talk about class balance stuff. We can talk about adding like a paladin taunt. We can talk about all these sort of things. I, I agree to some extent with all that. I think it needs to start with under the hood stuff. What are your opinion on graphics? They should not change the graphics. Nope. I, I, I think changing the graphics, you're going to... A lot of people are going to dance game and they're going to put a bad, like a lot of people, it's going to put a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths by doing, changing something that's so tried and true and nobody really complains about. Effectively, nobody is complaining about the textures of Classic WoW. Like there's some things that maybe you could do better. Like this damn mount could stop like vibrating at, you know, a, a thousand RPM or whatever. Like, you know, it, you can make this a little bit smoother so my name's not jittering all over my screen. That would be fine. But as, but as far as like changing the textures go, <laughs> as far as changing the textures go, um, I, I I really don't think that's a good idea. So what about new character models? Absolutely not. Chat, what do you guys, what do you guys think about new character models? For me, absolute no go. Absolute no go. New character models. Why not? Because the animations are different. It doesn't feel like classic. It's it's not good, man. Like. Uh, it, it's it's not good for the game because even even if some people like it, you you, the majority of people are not a fan, right? They want to have the differentiation between what classic WoW is and what retail WoW is. There's a lot of people that like the old models better. What about paladin and shaman for both factions? Uh, it's funny. The idea of having paladin and shaman for both factions is kind of funny. I I feel like that's not really vanilla. If you have paladin and shaman for both factions. I would like to see how it plays out. I mean, look, I play a paladin. You, if I had a wind fury, you want to talk about balancing ba balancing hybrids? Give me wind fury, okay? You give me wind fury, that would be badass, okay? So part of me, like on a selfish level, like yeah, I would love to have a shaman with wind fury. I would love to have a shaman with wind fury totem. On. Uh, yeah, I would love to have a Shaman win through Totem in my raid. But I think from a design standpoint, I think from a design standpoint, I don't think it's necessarily a good idea off the cuff. I feel like that's something that's not really vanilla. Like, people like the, the um, like, having that, like, differentiation between the two factions. Like, Alliance is Paladins, Horde is Shamans. Great. Now, would I like to see them balanced a little bit in between the two? Sure. Wait, you really play Paladin? I thought you played Druid. Yeah, man, let me keep saying the word Paladin over and over again. How's that sound? The Horde also has Paladins. Not in vanilla, they don't. That shield seems OP for 19. I think this is like a big-time level 19 twink shield. Cure one poison, one more poison every two seconds for eight seconds. Yeah, this is like a nasty twink shield, dude. So, yeah, that's that's what I would like to see in Classic Plus. I also... I, I can speak a little bit to, to more Paladin-specific stuff. I would love to see... see uh, Seal twisting being effective. I would I would love to see uh, I, I would love to see seal twisting being effective. Kind of that burning crusade play style of a paladin. I would love to see that applied to classic plus. I think that would be amazing. Is there music playing? Oh, yeah. But that was, um, I mean that's like my own personal thing. I really really would love to see that. You know. Uh, would you give Prop Paladin a taunt? I do think it would be wise to find a way to give Prop Paladin a taunt. I've used the example of making it like a set bonus on a piece of gear that you can get maybe. Uh, maybe in like a, a, in a dungeon or uh, maybe there's like, maybe there's an item. Maybe there's an item that drops that like, hey, whenever you cast Judgment, it also taunts. And it's like a trinket for a Paladin. And it's like, maybe it's like a class quest or something. Now, here's the bad part about that. The bad part about that is it pigeonholes you into always using that trinket. But maybe if you had like a, uh, a Librum that did that, maybe you've had a Librum that did that, like a, a relic item, you can change these in combat because it's like a weapon. It's like a ranged weapon. So maybe that'd be a good idea. That's a great idea. Put it on the list. Taunt Librum. Yeah. I mean, that's, man, that's really in depth, but like Taunt Librum. It's funny. I like stopped typing and I just started talking about stuff. So Classic Plus, I want... Um, mid-level content under the hood class uh, class balance changes fixing talents uh, interactions with certain stats coefficients etc right 
Um, maybe some minor. Help me, help me list out everything I said. So, uh, minor class balance changes. And talking about Librams, like these relic items, a, a lot of times, uh, hybrid classes, specifically, you have druids, you have you have shamans and you have paladins who don't have a range slot. They have a relic slot. And uh, the relics aren't always super powerful. Sometimes they are, but there's not a lot of really powerful ones. I would really like to see them expand on the relics because the relics were not added. The relics were not added until late in the game. I think it was like the 1.9 patch originally, the same patch AQ40 got put in in OG vanilla. So there's not a whole lot of them in the game. So I, I think them adding more Librams into the game would be wise to kind of help with some of that stuff. I think a, a Librum where your Paladin, a Paladin Librum where like your judgment now also acts as a taunt would be sick because then a prop Paladin could have that on and they could uh, judge and they could taunt. Or if they're an off tank for a fight, what they can do is they take it off and they have another Librum running. Professions are useless in vanilla. That's super not true. I will say this, you could, you could make an argument that engineering is too strong in vanilla. You can make an argument that engineering is too strong in vanilla and maybe the other profession should be either brought up to par or engineering should be nerfed. I don't think it feels good to nerf engineering, and I, but maybe if you added some more benefit to the other professions, it might make people, uh, it, it might people like make people think twice about wanting to go engineering for sure. As a PvP -er, engineering, I think engineering as a PvP -er is like a it's a must must have. Well, actually nowadays, as even as like a hardcore raider, engineering is a must have, right? Because people are like they're all gonna go sapper on like in AQ40, for example. You want to have your whole raid to have sappers to kill Viscidus, you know? So now it's like it's one of those things where it's like yeah, of course you want engineering. So I don't know, maybe maybe there's something that can be done there. Um, maybe there's like a slight profession rebalancing. One new raid either after or before Nax, make it easier. Well, I think. I think this is what else they should do, right? Uh, Mid-level content, uh, make a zone or new dungeon for uh, people leveling to 60. To horizontal, uh, I don't know what to call this. Uh, level 60 raids that, that are uh, a... sidestep that they they are what's the word i'm looking for horizontal progression is that right horizontal yeah horizontal pro the lateral progression yeah uh level 60 raids with a horizontal progression after nax um the gear that drops is good for different specs not the cookie cutter slash meta specs that the gear drops for in Nax. That's the big, that's a big one, man. Like I would love to see a Feral Druid tanking set. I would. Cause, cause Feral Druids are phenomenal tanks and they just literally have like no gear for, wait, what the heck? Another human? Hello. I thought everyone here was dead. This is a clone. Wait. Wait, you're Cornway? Oh. Ah, uh, howdy. Can I get a guild invite? How many people are in this uh, are in this guild? Sick. Last online two years. Where, dude? The real, the real crusade. Because this is this is on the this is on the clone server. The real crusade is uh, is like still alive and well, like full go on the raid groups. Uh, I mean, the the leadership. I'm telling you, the leadership of crusade stepping up is is phenomenal, man. We're we're one of the only guilds to to still be active from day one of vanilla. I think how crazy that is. He will surpass you. You made a mistake. No, no. Wife of S-Fan on Benediction is just very nice. Oh, my. Thank you. The world buffs. I've talked about this in the past. So here's something else I would like to see. Here's something else I would like to see. And, and Vader might know 
here's something else I would like to see. World buff minor revamp. All world buffs should be undispellable. Currently, only half of them are undispellable. Okay, everybody who says no world buffs, Blizzard has already said they will never do no world buffs again because they saw that it was a huge mistake in Season of Mastery. I said that it was going to be a huge mistake. Uh, a very vocal minority of people were talking about how world buffs suck, remove world buffs, and then what happened? They got rid of world buffs, and everybody who was raiding in Season of Mastery was like, holy shit, this is boring. People like being strong. And it's good because world buffs are good because they make you travel around the world. They, it, it adds to the community aspect of the game where people, oh, hey, yo, hey, I got this dire mall open. Anybody want this? Yeah, sure. Here, come in. Sure thing, buddy. Like, I remember, dude, I, I literally met people and would start talking to people regularly because different guilds had different, uh, had like the same raid times. And it's like, yo, so and so from Vampire Clan, uh, he, he has a DM open if you want to join his group. Cool. Let's buddy up with them and, and let's go join them. It's it's so good, man. It's so good. Raid 3 did most of the guild's world buffs. Yeah, I mean, a bunch... Uh, like, Crusade was such a, a big player on the server in general. Like, we, we got to know a bunch of people in different guilds through stuff like that, you know? So... Does Classic Plus need new races? Rather than a human, it would be something else. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm indifferent on new races... Like, I just don't know. I, I saw some Turtle WoW stuff where they were like, they, they have like high elves and they have goblins, which I think is kind of cool, but I'm indifferent. So world buffs would be amazing without the dispel meta and with Chrono Boon. Yeah, I know. M m most problems with the world buffs are addressed with... Uh, them being completely undispellable plus Chrono Boon. You know, you know whose idea Chrono Boon was actually. Uh, it was actually Tip's idea. Like whenever, whenever I say like we had we had the opportunity to talk to the devs a lot in the past. Tip's, I remember we were talking about this in the past. Tip's, he he came up with the idea. He was telling me he was like, dude, they should just make an item that saves your world buffs. And at first I was like, I don't know, is that kind of me? I was like. I wonder if that, that would be like weird or abusable or anything like that. Or if it's too much, if it's too different. That's what I thought. Uh, but in practice, whenever the Chrono Boom got put in the game, which was way too late, way the hell too late in original vanilla, it was miserable, uh, got put in way too late. But when they got put in, everyone's like, damn, this thing was amazing. It was actually such a good idea. It's called logging out. Yeah, but you know what the real problem is? Is whenever I'm getting my world buffs on Thursday night at 3 a.m. and then I'm logging out all the way until Tuesday night at 7 whenever my guild raids, whenever everybody's back home from work, like, that's bullshit. Yeah, you know? That's so dumb. Because I have to get them at 3 a.m. on a Thursday because that's the only time when people are done raiding. Typically, people are raiding on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, Right? The Grievers are out, or the Grievers are, are asleep for once. That's their break day. 3 a.m. on a Thursday, that's like the Griefer off, off hours, you know? But then now I have to log out with my world buffs forever. When instead I get the Chrono Boon, save my world buffs, I can't get my world buffs dispelled running in between them, but I'm still running around the world, I'm still logged in, I'm still playing my character, the world is still active, I'm not raid logging, right? Some people will still raid log because that's how they want to play the game. They don't have a lot of time to spend all week and, and they, they don't want to know life the game. They get to a certain point and they want to, they want to coast, they want to cruise and that's fine. But you, you shouldn't be forced to play the game in a way to where it's like, I can't log on. Uh, uh, something that causes you to not play the game in order to be able to do, in order to be able to do something you want to do, you have to not play the game, which is you want to raid with your world buffs and you like having the big power. That is so bad. That is terrible. It's it's bad design. Um, really, really, really not good. And currently, half the world buffs are undispellable, but I believe Songflower and Dire Maw buffs are dispellable, and then the other ones aren't. Like uh, like ZG is not dispellable. Uh, Anixia is not dispellable. But, but whenever you dispel one buff, it has like a force multiplier. So as you, they, they, they stack exponentially. So if you have six buffs and you get one buff removed, it's a lot worse for you than if you have, let's say four buffs and you have three, and you have uh, one buff removed, right? So yeah, 
Do you think world buffs should persist through death? Death? I think probably not. I I think I think probably not because now you're talking about it making an impact on like PvP and, and like a whole lot of other stuff, right? Uh, I I think I think if you de if you die, you're dead, and I think that's just part of the game. I don't I don't think having world buffs persist through death is necessarily a good idea. If world buffs never drop, if you die in raid, the problem is is now every guild will demand that you get world buffs. Like at me as a guild leader, if you don't get world buffs before raid and you can't lose them if you die, like it's it's not good because now you're forcing people to play that way. And, and, and it's like, okay, well, a lot of guilds already do that. Yeah, but like a lot of the guilds that you, the, the, that's the guild that you sign up for and to play that way, right? But there are a lot of guilds that are like super casual. Like you guys don't realize there are a lot of super casual guilds that don't require that. Balance racials, um, well, I talked about that a little bit, right, with the weapon skill thing. I don't know. I, I don't know about racial balance. Uh, maybe, maybe there's something that can be done there, but I don't have a good example of like how you could balance racials. But here's my point: have the fun of world buffs is knowing that death equals rip run adds to the stakes of each raid. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, it's the same thing with hardcore, right? It's the stakes. Rank 14 gear season one made the gear building process from 60 to uh, MC BWL not as fun. Yeah. Well, you know what else I would really love to see, okay? And I was I was waving the flag for this, and I sat at a table with people that worked at Blizzard at the time, and they told me it they would not do it because they thought it was too confusing for the players. Progressive itemization. I, I dude, I was waving the flag hard for this one, and they never hit it, dude. They're like, the problem with that is, so what is the concept of progressive itemization? This is an old, look, I'm digging out of the vault for this one, okay? I used to talk about this all the time, years ago. And what progressive itemization did is it was basically like the key trait that made Nostalrius pop off years ago. It was, we want to have progressive patch cycles and we want to have the, you know, the raids release in a certain order. But not only that, we want to have the items that get put into the game and the gear that gets updated in the game to happen at the right time. So for example, you guys remember Savage Gladiator Chain? You guys remember Savage Gladiator Chain? When of you go to uh, BRD, Blackrock Depths, there used to be a website called itemization.info and, uh, it would show you every item and how much it changed. And, and the person who ran that website dropped it, but they did all this research, research to have all those numbers ready. Uh, Gorosh. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what draws off of. So you see this item, 13 strength, 14 agility, 13 stamina, increases your crit chance by two, requires level 52 male chest piece. Look at the set bonus, increased defense by two. The hell? 20 armor. What weird set bonuses? Well, that's because this chess piece used to be a male tanking chess piece until patch 1.10, if I remember right. Was it 1.9 or 1.10? Maybe somebody can correct. But it was either the patch that AQ40 came out or the patch immediately after whenever they um, whenever they added the tier, uh, tier 0 0.5 gear. It's Hunter Biss also. This chess piece is the best chess piece in the game for hunters, for warriors, for rep paladins, for shamans, enhanced shaman, uh, all the way. So, so you have four classes. It's the best chess piece in the game for them all the way until AQ40 comes out. Not rogues because it's male. Five piece to get one crit. I mean, that's a pretty good set bonus, one crit. But, uh, but, but you don't want the rest of the pieces. You just want the one chess piece. Uh, not true. Hunter wants eight piece. Hunter wants their tier gear. Oh, I'm sorry. You know what? Let me, let me correct myself. You're right about the hunters because they want the they want the set bonus from their tier gear. You're you're absolutely right. I misspoke. For them, it's their pre raid bis for hunters. Um, but for but for the other three, it's straight up their best their best piece of gear. Two percent crit is nuts. I think it's like three percent crit for a uh, no no no. It's close to three percent for a hunter and a, and a paladin, but is it? I think it's like, what is what is the agility? Is it twenty nine agility for a crit for a hunter? How many how, how much agility for for crit is it for hunter?
It's 59 for a hunter? It, I know it's really high. Is it 59? Yeah, okay. So so it's not that much runner, but for a warrior and for a, for a paladin, for for us, for for us, it's almost 3% crit and then 26 attack power. That's wild. People don't realize that classic wow was easy. Dude, I, you hit the nail on the head and this is exactly what I said, dude. People don't realize that Classic WoW was easy mostly because we got post-patch itemization. Spell damage and especially spell hit gear was non-existent at the start. Absolutely. Classic WoW and stuff is easier now than it was back in the day for a lot of reasons, right? We know more, we have better computers, we're better gamers, we have a mouse with 12 buttons on it, right? All that stuff. I have a Starforge PC. All that stuff, right? But the the thing that, like, one of the other big things that Blizzard can actually control, because those are all intangibles, right? Those are all intangibles. You can't control those. But what you can control is the fact that all the gear in Vanilla WoW from day one is way the hell too strong. And somebody hit the nail on the head when they said you could put rank 14 gear day one. You could immediately start ranking in Season of Mastery. And it's the post-patch ranking gear. It's not. It wasn't the early ranking gear. Correct me if I'm wrong. So what progressive itemization is, progressive itemization is when you put the items in the game... Uh, that are bad at the beginning and then they get updated in the later patches because they get updated in the later patches in order to match the raids in order to act as better catch-up gear for you know the high-end raiders and stuff like that people who are doing the content so now those people that are already doing all that content right away they have really good gear with a bunch of spell hit on it a bunch of spell power and they're ripping through the raids even faster than they were before and this is something they did on private servers. And again, this is the thing that made private servers so popular initially because private servers existed for so long. But private servers tried to do this Blizz-like thing. They tried to do this Blizz-like thing. And the idea being, we're going to do progressive patches. You know, there's 11 patches in Vanilla WoW. The game is constantly changing. The items are changing. The, uh, the raids are changing. Just things are, the world is changing, right? And this is what, uh, this is what Nostalrius Elysium Lights Hope did. And, and it, that's really what set the standard. This is back whenever I was streaming on YouTube, back whenever all this stuff was going down, back whenever, I mean, like the, the origins of like the push for classic WoW, that's when all this was going down, you know? Like from a community standpoint. And it became the standard for what people wanted for vanilla. You know? Kungan has been saying that since the start of Classic Launch. This isn't the real vanilla experience because of the itemization. Kungan shared my video. I made a video about this, talking about all this stuff. I made a video talking about how, like, you got to account for the times and you got to make some changes. You need to make some changes for Vanilla WoW. Kungan shared my video. I mean, and, and that's a guy who's done literally everything in OG. I mean, he's, he's one of the most decorated OG Classic WoW players of all time. Actually, I think he is, right? From a PvE perspective, at least. You know, and he, he Kungan shared my video, and he was like, "Yeah, S Fan actually knows what he's talking about." You know, like he's 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 dead on with this stuff. But but Blizzard didn't want to do it. So I I I really hope, I really 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 hope that they do these things in Classic Plus. There's actually more, and I'll talk about it more. But I'm 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 going off on this massive rant that I've talked about for nearly two hours. And we don't even know if they're doing a Classic Plus or not because every time I start talking about this thing, I get the freaking... I, dude, I get so excited that I just can't stop thinking about it, man. I can't... Dude, I can't stop thinking about it, dude, because it reminds me... Dude, I, dude, I, feel, like, I feel like I did like five years ago, man. I feel like I did back whenever we were, we were, we were pushing for Classic, dude. When, when, as a community, dude, this is the WoW Classic waiting room with Classic Ass, with me and with Tips Out, with Stay Safe, and like it, it, it fe like I, I have that same. Oh look, it's Levy. I got like that, that like, I, I feel that fire, dude. I feel that juice, dude. I want it back, man. I, like, I, I want it. I want to do a Classic Plus again, dude. I, I, I would love to see that. Now, I again, I do so many more things. Dude, a hunter with a corrupted Ashbringer. Who, dude? What what guild would give a hunter a corrupted Ashbringer? Man, that's just shameless. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. 
So anyway, like I, I'm I'm feeling that same sort of fire, dude. And I do a lot of stuff now. Like I'm in a very different world. I'm in a I'm in a very different world than I than I used to be in five years ago. Five years ago, I had pretty much nothing but classic WoW. Right? I did. I actually did like IRL and stuff because it was like me and Miz did everything together. And then whenever classic beta came, everybody knew WoW classic waiting room, classic beta is gonna hit, classic WoW is gonna hit. Like that, we're going full send classic, right? But me and Miz used to do IRL and stuff together back when me and Miz got banned and like all, all kinds of stuff, right? But but everybody knew that was all just we're waiting for classic WoW. Now things are different, right? Now I'm doing sports. Now I'm doing variety new game launches, uh, cooking streams. Sometimes, all kinds of stuff, but deep down inside, I, I still love classic WoW, dude. I, I love classic WoW, despite the fact that I do so many other things. I, I, I love classic WoW. I love what it is. There's so many like good people in the community. This game, this game brings so much joy to so many people that I, I really, really want to see it flourish. And yesterday, yesterday was such a big point of validation of that for me. 300,000 viewers streaming a tournament of a 19 year old game. A 19 year old game. 300,000. That tournament was a, was a passion project. We found out about the hardcore servers being a thing and we sat in a meeting and I mean, I, I know Tips, Tips was kind of getting the itch, man. Tips was getting the itch and he's like, guys, we got to do this. And I, and I tell him, I'm like, dude, I'm in, I'm all in. I've wanted to host a classic event. I've wanted to put on a, a classic, because I, I never even did one, right? Like if you think about it, like I did a bunch of stuff before Classic came out, but once Classic came out, I never hosted like uh, like a tournament or anything like that. I, I partook in a bunch of other other people's stuff, but I was like, dude, I want us to go and I want to put on a tournament, and it's like blood sport. Let's make it blood sport. You get to level sixty, level sixty mock garage tournament. Tips was t I mean, Tips wanted to do it. I wanted to do it. We're like, let's do this thing. Tips basically comes out of retirement. You guys know his history with the CDL. Puts in probably over 100 hours working on this thing while he's still doing all the back end stuff, G gathering the admins and, and getting volunteers and, and doing all this stuff on the back end. And we end up putting together, right? We end up putting together. And, and dude, Tips knows this more than anybody because I, I was a rule complainer. Whenever did, and I was like, dude, Tips, there's too many rules in the CDL. Let's do this tournament, and I want no rules. Blood sport, prison rules, no rules at all. Let's just let the kids play. Now, we got into it a little bit, and we realized, okay, we need some rules. But um, I'm so happy about what happened yesterday and what we did yesterday because I'm, I'm, I will always be so passionate about Vanilla WoW, and, and, I, and I want to see this community flourish. And I know... People are gonna go play other games. I'm gonna go play other games. I'm gonna do other stuff. And then I'm gonna come back and, and I say vanilla, but classic in general, especially Burning Crusade. Like everybody knows I love Burning Crusade. I, I just, I want, I'm a big believer in, in what I call the provision of classic WoW. Vanilla, Burning Crusade, Wrath. I want these things to be available to people who wanna go play them because I feel like they were a pivotal, uh, they're, they're a pivotal, point in gaming history, all three of those expansions, they're, they're a pivotal point in gaming history and an MMO history that, that genuinely changed the game. So yeah, I think that the, the provision of it, providing it and allowing people to play it is huge. Big believer in that. And like I said, whether I am actively playing it or not, I always will want to, to take an opportunity whenever I get it to, to be able to support the community and I'm not the only one that feels that way, right? Like, you know, as a group, OTK, like we feel that way, we love WoW, right? If we have a chance to come back and get to do something cool for WoW, like that, that was a passion project for us. So yeah, that was a huge point of validation, man. I'm like, dude, I, I got to, I, I got to I got to be the host. I got to I got to host this crazy community event. Three hundred thousand viewers. 
Now it was amongst all streams. It wasn't just watching me, right? Obviously, you know, but that's not the point, right? That's it's something that we did. That was badass. It was it was incredible, dude. And I and I genuinely believe that it was an eye open. I believe that it was interesting. I believe that it was an eye opening moment for Blizzard to be like, oh shit. That was, I'm pretty sure that was the biggest event, the biggest tournament ever for, for all of WoW. Not just in prize pool, but in viewership. The AWC had 7K viewers. Yeah. It's just different. It's just harder to watch, you know? So anything... With, with all that being said, I really hope we get a Classic Plus. I, I, I really hope so. And I'm going to be streaming from the floor at BlizzCon all day. I'm going to be streaming all day on the floor. I'm going to get to do a special stream with like Guzu and Sarth and all these guys with Classic Devs. I don't know what it is. I just know I'm getting to stream Classic with Classic Devs. Or I guess I should say, I know that I'm getting the stream with classic devs. So I'm assuming that we're going to get something. I think, I think it's more than likely, it's going to be a new fresh, but I think it's more than likely some kind of season of mastery two, not really a classic plus, but this is the wish list. This is, this is what, this is my, this is my, this is where my heart is, you know? And, I, and, and if it's like a season of Mastery 2 type thing, I'll come back and I'll, and I'll do some content. I would love to see a Classic Plus. Like, I'll, I'll, I'll probably strap back up for a Classic Plus. Now, I, I, will, I will not, because here's the thing. Whenever OG, not OG, but whenever Classic came out in 2019, this was all I did forever. Right? This was it for months, like six months. I do too many other things now, so that's not going to be the case. Right, I do too many other things. That's not necessarily going to be the case because I'm moving around. But I'm in the fortunate situation that anytime I want to do WoW, anytime that I want to stream WoW, because I have all these other avenues of being able to stream and being able to do all these other things. I mean, hell, I w my stream was the most watched channel at TwitchCon this year, right? Having that sort of um, security and that sort of comfort allows me to, anytime I do want to play WoW, it's like, yo, I'm, I want to play. Right, I'm I'm here because I want to play. I'm not I'm not I'm not stuck here, which uh, that's something that not everybody has. You know, not just for WoW, but for any game section. Whenever you're a game section streamer, not a lot of people have that. So, anyway, I'm very fortunate for that. By the way, with all that being said, this will, be, this will probably be a YouTube video. So I hope you guys enjoyed the YouTube video. I hope you guys are excited as I am. I do everything here, right? Like my core, my roots, it's classic WoW. But I do literally everything on this channel. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys enjoyed hearing about what I would like to see for Classic Plus and what I would like to see at BlizzCon. So you guys can join me on my stream at twitch.tv slash svantv where I'm doing everything, again, like I said. But I'll be at BlizzCon, I'll be on the floor. YouTube, Instagram, Discord, Reddit, Twitch, Twitter, everything is svantv. Hope you guys like the video. Uh, like it if you like it, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel, all that stuff, turn on your notifications. All my stuff is SFAN TV. Follow my Twitter if you want. Join the Discord, everything else. So thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys later.